Okay, so now let's talk about, well, what types of effects do they have on that target cell? Okay, so um, obviously there's gonna be a bunch of different specific effects. So what I'm trying to do now is to make some generalization, okay? So one thing that I did want to mention that the effect that that hormone has on the cell really depends on what cell type it is. So for example, epinephrine. Epinephrine is, is a water soluble hormone. And what it does is it's going to cause a bunch of different responses, right? So epinephrine, another name for epinephrine is adrenaline. So think about all of those physical responses that are going to happen to your body when your body's releasing epinephrine, right? So if you go to the, um, the heart, it's going to increase heart rate. It'll dilate those coronary vessels. It'll increase mental alertness. It, it decreases um, motility in the in digestive tract, right? So you have different cells doing different responses, all of them res that are responding to one single hormone, which is the epinephrine. Okay, so keep that in mind. It's a very complicated question when you talk about what would the response be. Okay, so for those water soluble hormones, they're going to bind to the receptor, use the secondary messenger. And so what they do are they're going to create fairly rapid responses in the body. They do things like open and close ion channels. Those are just easy conformational changes in the cell. They do things like activate enzymes such as kinases that create um, other responses in the cell. They do things like cause vesicles that are just sitting around waiting to be um, to diffuse into it. Okay, so they're going to do fairly easy, quick responses in the cell. So whereas the lipid soluble hormones, as you've already seen, once they create that receptor protein receptor hormone complex, they travel all the way into the nucleus. And what they're doing is they're actually synthesizing entirely new proteins, new products, right? So for the water soluble hormones, they're just secreting or opening and closing things that are already there. For the lipid soluble hormones, what they're doing is they're changing your DNA, your gene expression. And that's why when you think about all of the effects, for example, testosterone during puberty, testosterone is a lipid soluble hormone, and it's going to have pretty drastic effects on the body because it is able to change gene expression patterns. Okay, so you have these pretty significant changes to the cells. Okay, so thinking about the types of things that they do, which hormone would be fast acting? That would be water soluble because all again, they're just opening and closing things or causing secretion or something like that that's really quick. Whereas the lipid soluble hormones, they have to go in, they do translation, then they do trans so transcription, then translation, and they're making entirely new proteins, which is gonna change the gene expression for those cells. So that would definitely be a slow acting hormone. Okay, so let's do a quick review, make sure we got all those pieces. Okay, which class of hormone can diffuse through the cell membrane? Remember, we're looking at the hydrophobic core of that plasma membrane, so those would be lipid soluble ones. The cyclic AMP and PIP are both examples of second messengers. And remember that second messengers, those are the ones that physically change, do the response in the cell. Okay, so especially make sure you're familiar with cyclic AMP. Which enzyme converts ATP into cyclic AMP? It's right in the name. Okay, so that one is going to be the adenylate cyclase. Remember that the G protein is not an enzyme. All it does is activate the enzyme, which is the cyclic AMP, sorry, which is the adenylate cyclase, which makes cyclic AMP, CAMP. Okay, so now we need to go into how we're going to regulate the hormone activities. 